afternoon, good morning, Bitwellians of and beyond, since we have no idea what time you're watching this. Today, we are at day 32. We only have eight more days for our Lenten meditations and our Daniel fast for this year. Um, I don't know about you, but I have definitely decided to keep some of this going on. I really need it. And if you need it, let's do it together. And so today, for the recipe, we're going to make black beans. I don't know why I haven't done this. And the secret that I'm going to share with you is I put them in the slow cooker, and I do not soak them. I put them in here, I put them on low, and I turn them on all night long, get up in the morning, stir them again. If they're not ready, I just keep them on low until they're tender. So I'm actually going to begin usually what I do just to sear the vegetables I'll turn it on low just to make sure that the vegetables get where I want them to be as always and I'm untangling my cord I always begin my black beans these are black beans too by the black beans I always begin one second. I don't know what I need. With my olive oil. And I put in just enough to cover the bottom of the pan. And again, these are going to slow cook and they're going to Cook all night long. The trick for me for black beans is simply my seasonings. Now, these are the seasonings that are most healthy for you. There is no meat in these beans. And I'm going to make them as healthy as possible. You want to get turmeric, turmeric, healthy for you, smoked paprika, Tony's Creole seasoning, a little spice, garlic pepper, my, what I call my rock salt, that's really my kosher salt, my black pepper, and I use crispy onions. I don't put in the regular chopped onions, I use these. Um, just to give it a little more texture and the onions don't break down as fast. I don't know. I just really like them. And then I have regular chicken broth. When I make my black beans, I use chicken broth, not necessarily the um, Maggie Pollo or the powdered sauce, the, the powdered bouillon stuff. I just use this. So I've got my oil going. I also take a little bit of ginger and grate it in. But right now, I'm just going to cut some of the skin off. And I'm going to put the onions, green pepper, into the pot. Even before the oil starts seasoning. Um... I don't grate necessarily the ginger, but I do cut smaller chunks in. Probably should do it on the cutting board, but I got too much in my way. Oops. Ooh. That's the other thing. So I have a little chili powder also and a little cumin. That all goes into my black beans. I'm going to make myself warm here. There we go. So, cutting my ginger. The ginger is not necessary if you don't want the... I just like the flavor of ginger and it's so healthy for you. Beans, any kind of beans are a source of protein. Particularly if you're not going to eat meat. You need to substitute or get your protein. 
Did you know that vegetables have protein? I thought the animals, the animals were the source of our protein. The truth is the animals are a source of protein because they eat the vegetables. So the source of protein is really the vegetables. Ain't that something? And so I'm gonna put maybe just a little bit more. And remember I said earlier, ginger is really good for digestion, for a sour stomach, when you feel like a cold is coming on. Drink a strong pot of ginger, ginger tea, ginger root tea, and you will be good to go. And so, cutting this. Probably could have cut this up ahead of time and had this done, but really, this is going to be a two day recipe. I'm just going to put this ginger in. It's going to be cut. And again, remember that when you get your vegetables from, particularly your fresh vegetables, from a grocery store, you wash them, wash them immediately. And when you go to use them, wash them again. Don't trust that the sprayer in the fresh food, fresh uh, vegetable section is enough. Even when they bag their own name brand vegetables, don't you know, don't settle with that. Of course, this is just green pepper going into the bottom of the pan. And I know that I'm putting in an entire bag of black beans. And literally, after I put the lid on, I'll check them every now and then just to see how they're doing. But I really don't do anything else except to taste, to see what I need to add to season them. Now I'm using kind of a large green pepper. Choice is yours. But again, I'm trying to get I try to sneak in all the time something that you don't normally do. You know, I would not necessarily put in green pepper in my black beans, but I'm going to just because there's just something mental and spiritual about knowing it in there. Not that there's anything special about the green pepper, but just that I'm adding more vegetables than I normally would because I just, I don't know, you just get a sense that you're eating better. And so I'm just going to do that. Last thing I'm going to put in. You can add regular onions if you want to. I just don't want to. And so, with this. And I've got rather large chunks of green pepper. I didn't dice it or make it smaller. And so, with my green pepper in, my ginger root slice. Now I'm going to add my little crispy French onions that look like that. And then cover. No, not too much. Cover the bottom. And again, I'm going to let them in. Now, I'm going to add my entire bag. This is a one pound bag of black beans. So now of course adding these black beans we can eat from this pot for days. So tomorrow after they've cooked I'll show you and then I'll show you how to make a black bean dip from this. And then you just pile on the seasonings that you want. 
So always, I'm using my ground black pepper, which I use for everything. I'm using garlic powder, not garlic salt. Probably fresh um, garlic might be good, but again, that's a lot of cutting. Now I'm kind of judicious with my Tony seasoning, but that stuff is hot. And I'm adding just a little bit of chili pepper, not a whole lot. Little smoke paprika, smoke, mm -hmm. smoke paprika. Shake it on as you want. My turmeric, turmeric. Turmeric is good for blood pressure. And my cumin. When you smell a cumin, they actually smell like how your beans end up smelling. So that's pretty good. And again, all healthy for you. I saved my rock salt for last. Now, I take enough um, chicken broth to cover what's in here. I don't make a puddle. I don't put in more. You know, so that they're drowning. I put in enough to cover the beans. Just enough to cover. Now I'm going to lift up the computer and show you what this looks like. what that looks like <laughs> this is so unprofessional but that's what it looks like before I add the final bit of water and salt okay let's put this back oh remember this is in my kitchen this is not professional now I add enough water to go all the way to the top and if you notice even my slow cooker is sitting on a cutting board. And I'm going to add more water because I really want it to cover, cover these beans. There we go. Give it one more stir. And good. These are beans, and so I'm going to add about, if you can see, almost, almost a handful of salt. These beans are going to cook all night long, and all that salt is going to get absorbed. So we're going to stir it one more time. I'm going to add just a little bit more water. And once I put this lid on, I'll probably check it maybe in an hour just to make sure everything's going the way I want to. And then I'm done. Until the morning time. Again, slow cooker, no soak the beans, let them sit in the water, in the slow cooker, low heat, let it go. Let's get ready for our meditation. On tomorrow, I'll show you what the beans look like. You know, uh, maybe we'll go ahead and make the um, black bean dip, if you like that, and bon appetit. He's going to touch you right where you stand. Let your healing stream flow down. Let your healing stream flow down. 
Lord, your people wait for a touch from you. Let your healing stream flow down. Let your healing stream receive it. There it is. Flow down. From you let your healing stream flow down. Let your healing stream come on. Yes, flow down. Let your healing stream. surrender to you in your presence as your healing stream is flowing. Heal me not only in my body but in my mind, in my conceptions, in my perception, that I may serve you and that you may be glorified. And my soul says yes to you. Come on, let's sing it. My soul says yes. My soul says
Our meditation takes us back into the inner court of the tabernacle, actually the inner, inner court of the tabernacle. We call it the Holy of Holies or the Most Holy Place. It is the place where we meet God one-on-one -on -one as the high priest, not just the priest, not just the royal priest, but the high priest who has every right to be in that most sacred place. So we begin with our backs straight on whatever surface we're on, on a chair, on a bed, on the floor, on the couch. We are aware of our surroundings and so sudden noises do not frighten us. Our refrigerator turning on, the furnace kicking on, even the phone ringing. We're grateful for this time set aside without obligation to anyone else. And so we begin deep breath in through the nose, out through the mouth. Deep breath in through the nose, out through the mouth. Deep breath in through the nose, Out through the mouth, gently closing your eyes. Our attention is turned to the breath, the rising and falling of the chest, the rising and falling of the stomach. Imagining the expansion and contraction of the lungs. Grateful for that breath. Feeling the weight of our body against our surfaces. Realizing the light is with us. The light that surrounds us, encompasses us, warms us, loves us. We are in that light at all times. And so as we step into the inner court, we go directly to the altar of incense. We pour in a cup as we turn our hearts to the Lord and allow our hearts to speak without our words. We pause here for a moment and let our hearts unload. And so as our hearts continue to speak, we step across the threshold directly into the Holy of Holies and we close the curtain behind us. Again, reviewing the mercy seat with the cherubim whose wings touch We look at the contents in the ark, in the ark, the tablets of the law, 
the bowl with the manna, Aaron's budding rod. And so as we have looked at the law and understood grace, now we look at the bowl, the golden bowl that contains one piece, one cake of manna. The manna fell first thing in the morning, was fresh and new every day. Manna came when there was no other way to be fed. And so think of the times when the Lord came to you, when there was no other way for you to survive. That's why he's the bread of life. Bread is so significant. But it is representative. And so it is survival that that bowl of manna represents. What have you survived? And do you understand the only way you made it was because of the bread of life that came to you when you could not go to it. New mercy, new provision, new deliverance, new survival every single day. Think about that rough time, and maybe you have more than one rough time in your life. You made it because God is manna. Even if the trial wasn't that devastating, perhaps it wasn't as dangerous as other people's stories, but mentally, physically, and spiritually, you thought you would not survive. And God came to you as manna, fresh manna, not borrowed manna, not even shared manna. Manna made just for you. God is your manna. Thank him for your survival in the wilderness, in the desert, when there was no other way. God is your manna. Lift your hands, make your priestly robes, and give him thanks and praise and worship. And so we bring our attention back to the breath. Deep breath in through the nose. Out through the mouth. Deep 
deep breath in through the nose, out again through the mouth. Deep breath in through the nose, out through the mouth. Gently opening your eyes. Face the day. Face the rest of your life with God as your manna. Grace and peace.